There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Str- str- strong. Fun. 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 And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Tevish Zat Doom of Fools. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about Tevish Zat in Commander and the three ways that I would build this partner planeswalker. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video by the end of it, it really helps us out. Let's jump over to this Commander. Tevish Zat, Doom of Fools, a partner commander, one black, four other for four loyalty, plus two, create two zero one black thrall creature tokens. So we've got this ability on a planeswalker to create very sacrificable creatures, and we can get a lot of value out of that. Plus one, that middle ability, you may sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. If you do, draw two cards, then draw another card if the sacrifice permanent was a commander. And then minus ten, gain control of all commanders. Put Put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. Tevisat dies to this. We're bringing all commanders back onto our side. We can then use Tevis to sacrifice another player's commander to draw three cards, or we can sacrifice our partner in a pinch. And we're also getting to just easily create two zero ones that we can get a lot of value out of. For the strong way to build Tevish, I'm going to lean into a proliferate build and really try to get to that ultimate as quickly as possible by partnering him with at least a commander that has green in it. For fun, I'm going to go with an Orzov kill everything build and we're going to build it around Ravo Soul Tender as the partner. And for mean, we're going to go with a Sultai Sack CEDH build and just lean heavy into a Hulk combo. Let's look at the strong way. So for the strong way, we're going to partner Tevish with Kaidil, chosen of Krufix. Now, you may be going, come on, Thrasios is more powerful. Yes, but look at the synergy here. There's a little bit of synergy, and this is a strong deck that we're going to build, but it is a little more casual than CEDH. Tevish's middle ability to be able to sacrifice creatures that we do create, or Planeswalkers to then draw cards, is going to also feed into the synergy with Kaidel, tap to add a colorless to your mana pool for each card you've drawn this turn. Having an easy and reliable way to do that is going to give us profit on the back end. So what do we run with this? We want it to be an Evolution Sage proliferate build. This is what we want. One green, two other for a 3-2 whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Proliferate. We're trying to get to that ultimate as quickly as possible by stacking a bunch of abilities that are going to give us counters so that we can get Tevish built up as quickly as we can to then minus 10 and get control of all commanders even if they're in the command zone. We're going to want to run doubling season. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. This is huge. With, Zev with Zat on the battlefield doing that plus two, but we're adding four counters with doubling season that's enormous contagion engine proliferate then proliferate again that's the part of this card that we want that four cost activated ability proliferate then proliferate again we are trying to get to that ultimate as quickly as we can. Rings of the Bright Hearth may not help us get to the ultimate any quicker, but it is going to let us double our abilities. So if we're taking him up two to create two zero ones, we're going to get double that many. Same thing with that ability to sacrifice a creature and draw cards. The more that we're able to take advantage of his abilities that are already built in, the better. And Rings of the Bright Hearth is fantastic with this commander. The Chain Veil, same thing for each Planeswalker you control. You may activate one of its loyalty abilities once this turn, as though none of its loyalty abilities have been activated this turn. We're going to get to grow faster. Chain Veil is going to help us get there. Cards like Gilder Bairn, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, one mana and either green or blue and then either green or blue for an 1-3 oaf. Pay three untap it for each counter on target permanent put another of those counters on that permanent this one moves quickly we really only need gilder to tap and then untap with the activated ability once for each counter on target permanent put another of those counters on that permanent tevish is on the battlefield we take him up two he's at six using gilder's ability it's automatically at 12 that's enormous 
That's enormous. This card can definitely help us get there and is a big reason why you want the partner for Tevish to be blue-green so that you can really take advantage of cards like that and cards like clock spinning. Pay one blue, buy it back for three so you can count, so you can use it again. Choose a counter on target permanent or suspended card. Remove that counter from that permanent or put another of those counters on it. For four mana, we're going to get to grow Tevish an extra counter every turn. This is the kind of ability that can help us get there. Deep Glow Skate enters the battlefield, double the number of each kind of counter on any number of target permanents. Boom. That's, that's exactly what we're going for. Six doubled is 12. We're able to activate that ultimate on the next turn we have Tevish on the battlefield. Peer, imaginative rascal. If one or more counters would be put on a permanent your team controls, that many plus one of each of those counters are put on that permanent instead. We want to get to that ultimate as quickly as possible, and luckily, a lot of these cards have synergy with each other. Toothy we're going to run because we're running Peer, and it's essentially just a free tutor for a great card, but we can also get extra tokens, extra counters, excuse me, on Tevish by taking more turns. Savor the moment is three mana to take an extra turn. You do have to skip the untapped step of that turn, but it does let us use that plus two twice and immediately go up to eight, essentially, if we've got Savor the moment in hand and we're able to cast it after we've already cashed Tevish Zod. It's going to help us get there quicker. You can also run cards like Temporal Mastery. Take an extra turn after this. We got a miracle for two mana. We can cast this. This is what you want to be doing. Trying to take advantage of cards like Doubling Season or Peer that are going to let you put extra counters on when you're already doing the thing. Cards like Deep Glow Skate that are going to double the amount of counters or take extra turns so that you can just put more counters through extra active activations yourself. There's also a lot of Abzan cards that really lean into plus one, plus one counters on creatures. And so that's probably another sub theme that you could put in this deck alongside with the cards and the strategies that we talked about with the proliferate. That's the strong way that I would build this. Let's look at the fun way, kind of fun, fun for you, and look at an Orzov kill everything. So for partner on this build, we're going to go with Ravos because we're going to be running a lot of Wraths in this build and we need the ability to get our stuff back. I love that at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Plus you get an anthem across all your creatures. I mean, at the very least, this is making your thralls one twos. That's nothing, it's nothing light. You know, that's nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> Ravos is going to give us access to white so that we can run a lot of removal, keep everybody off the board, let us get towards our ultimate let us work towards drawing extra cards, taking control of stuff, sacrificing stuff. Athreos is going to play really well with it too because we'll be able to put coin counters on another target creature we control or don't control. And if it that creature dies or is put into exile, we get to return that card to the battlefield under our control. So we're going to be doing stuff like this, wrathing the board, completely destroying all creatures, doing it in black as well, damnation, destroying all creatures. We're going to be able to get access to cards like Deadly Tempest, destroy all creatures. Each player loses life equal to the number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way. We can also run Rihanna mate we're going to be killing everything why don't we bring it back on our side of the battlefield it can be great in a black and white wrath deck to get in there and really just take advantage of all of these creatures being in the graveyard and bring them back to life so let's also run some creatures in our deck that we want to go and get out put into the graveyard and reanimate those we'll also be able to return them to our hand with ravos as our partner as long as he's on the battlefield so we'll get extra value out of that this is normally a strategy that I would build into a mean section of an EDH build, but I wanted to call this the fun way because this would be not super competitive. There's going to be a lot of wraths in this build and you're going to be reanimating stuff, but the ability to kill all creatures over and over again and force them to your opponents to deal with Tevish with spells is going to help you get to that ultimate and really take advantage of one of the most powerful ultimates for commander that any planeswalker has. There's another reason that I didn't call this the mean way to build and that's because we are going to build a CDH version of this deck in the mean way, and that's with Protean Hulk Sack. So for the Protean Hulk CEDH deck, we're going to go all the way CEDH and we're going to run Thrasios as our partner. It's really just to give us access to those two colors and it be a cheap spell that we can cast if we need to. Tevish works 
possibly in this deck because it is a sack outlet. It's not instant speed, and it's not super repeatable, but having a tick up of plus one to give us the ability to sacrifice a creature is going to play very well, and you'll see why. This deck runs Protean Hulk. When it dies, when we sack it, we get to search our library for any number of creature cards with total CMC six or less and put them onto the battlefield. That means that we're going to be running cards like Frixie and Delver so that that's five of our six to go and get. It's going to return a target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield, so we'll get to return the Hulk again. While we're doing that first activation, we're going to get Viscera Seer as well, so we have that instant speed sack outlet. With the Protean Hulk, we're going to bring it back with the Frixian Delver. It happens again, and we're going to go get Micaeus for six mana and Walking Ballista for zero mana. It's going to die, and because Micaeus has undying ability built into it that ability for other non-human creatures get plus one plus one and have undying that means that walking ballista is going to come back with a plus one plus one counter on it we're going to take off the counter so that we can deal a damage with the walking ballista and then it's just going to be coming back over and over again through our sack outlet with viscera seer let's look at this combo so these combos can be a little complicated to walk through so while this one is fairly simple in terms of cedh and how complicated some of those combos can be to track and play we're going to run this one like we would run it in the deck so that we can kind of see it firsthand in front of us. So Protean Hulk is going to be on the battlefield, okay? And we need a way for it to die. We have our Zat, so hopefully we're going to be able to tick it up Sack Protean Hulk, it goes to the graveyard, and we get six CMC or less of creatures from our library into play. So we're first going to go get Phyrexian Delver, and we're going to get Vasira Seer. Vasira Seer is going to give us that instant speed sack outlet that we need. Sacrifice a creature, scry one. And when Phyrexian Delver enters the battlefield, we're going to return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we'll lose life equal to its CMC. So that means we return Protean Hulk, and we then sacrifice it again to the Viscera Seer, going and getting Micaeus the Unhallowed for six mana and the Walking Ballista. Since it's zero, it comes in with no counters on it, but it does have plus one, plus one from Micaeus. So when we sack Walking Ballista to Viscera Seer, it checks Micaeus' ability. It comes back with a plus one, plus one counter on it. We remove that plus one, plus one counter on it. It deals a damage to any target. It's sitting there as a one, one. We sacrifice it to Viscera Seer. It comes back with Micaeus' ability as a plus one, plus one countered up Walking Ballista baby shoots another point of damage out, sacrifice to Viscera Seer, and as long as there's no interaction, you've got an infinite loop there where you can kill all creatures on the battlefield, but you probably just want to go ahead and kill all of your opponents. So that's a more visual walkthrough of how that combo works and how that infinite combo can get you the win, because we also are running blue and green as our partner colors to Tevishzat's black. We get to run Hermit Druid Laboratory Maniac combo. So Hermit Druid is going to not want you to put any basic lands in your commander deck. That way, when you activate its ability, your entire library is going to go into your graveyard, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land, put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. And that's relevant because if we've got Laboratory Maniac on the battlefield, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. So get Laboratory Maniac on the battlefield, get Hermit Druid on the battlefield at the end of your opponent's step or even it's probably best to do this during your upkeep step before you draw your card. So at your upkeep, activate Hermit Druid's ability. Your entire library goes into your graveyard. You go to draw a card and it checks to see Laboratory Maniac. Yep, still there, hasn't been interacted with. You win the game straight up. So that's another infinite combo for the CEDH version of this deck that you can build into it. I'm obviously newer to CEDH, and so that was probably a pretty scuffed explanation of how this CEDH deck could roll. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I need to clarify or didn't quite get right and might make a good pinned comment. Other than that, I appreciate you bearing with me as I'm learning CEDH, because there have been some comments requesting that I look at some of these commanders from more of a competitive angle. Those are the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Tevish Zat. Let's close the book.
Thank you so much for watching. I really like this commander. Planeswalkers as commanders can be pretty polarizing, but I do think Tevish Zat is pretty damn cool. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button on the way out if you like the video. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. And if you want me to build a certain commander three ways, let me know down in the comments and you might see it in an upcoming video. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.